garning. This is too much already. This is way too much garning. I am done. Robbie? No, Robbie. Don't stop gardening. Okay. Okay. Seriously, this is too much for some people. And I'm going to show you how you can do all this a hundred times easier. Come on, but I'll show you how you can garden. No excuses what the issue is. Anybody can garden. Come with me. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California and today I'm going to show you quickly, I've already done it, how to paint a patio chair and you can get it done in like 15 minutes and cheat too. Let me show you real quick. I go to Home Depot and I get their tester paints. Their tester paints at Home Depot are 50 cents usually. Every store could be different. Lowell's, they also have tester paints, and these are paints that people have returned. They didn't like the color, I guess, and they take them back and then they put them up for sale. I shouldn't tell my secrets. I won't be able to get any more. But Lowell's, I think, has them for a dollar, and then sometimes they put them on sale. Now, the thing is, if you don't want to use the color that they've got, and they get, you know, like here's one that was kind of blue, and I was going to mix it, but I changed my mind, and I went ahead and went with the straight green. If you don't like the colors they've got, but you really want to get just a little bit of paint, I think these paints are only 3 and $4 to start with, and it really doesn't matter what type you get. They're all pretty much interior, exterior paints. They work great. I just buy whatever they have. This one's flat, and I've painted in both flat, semi-gloss, and gloss. But they're 50 cents, and for 50 cents, I have taken these chairs. So many times you find people throw these away because as they get old and the sun, the UV uh, rays go through it, the white starts to come off in your hands, and then people throw them away, but they don't realize that's the best time to paint them. And it holds the paint. I've got some chairs that are cheese. They're well over two and three years old painted, probably even longer than that. You can get like two, possibly three chairs out of one can. Generally, I only need to do one coat, and it's up to you if you want to do two. It's up to you if you want to do the underside. My dad taught me to do everything because you know it's there or not there. So it depends on my mood. Don't tell my dad if I don't do it underneath. But I paint generally the whole thing, and it paints up so fast. So I hope I've given you an idea how to paint outdoor chairs. And yes, you can use these indoors or outdoors. I painted up a whole bunch. I've seen them on the streets and I'll pick them up. And I've painted them, had them for parties and stuff. But now I'm not having parties. So I'm still painting chairs. So with that, I hope I gave you an idea on how to paint a chair and save it. So we don't have to send these to the dump, but we can use them for whatever you want to use them for, be it a party or be it a raised bed. So I got news for you. I painted this chair because this chair is going to work for me. And I am going to show you the greatest setup in the world that anybody can do. I don't care if you've got the teeniest yard. I don't care if you even have a tiny house on wheels. If you're going to park it in the spring and the summer, you can make a garden. I'm going to show you how to make a garden that is so easy that anybody can take care of it. I'm going to say at any age, even if you're in a wheelchair, even if your back is killing you and you don't have to walk far, it's going to be the easiest garden to take care of. And it's going to look so cool. So come with me as I show you how to make a super cool garden that anybody can make with a chair. Let's go have a party and let's go make a super, super raised bed garden that you could grow tons of food in and it will almost take care of itself with you doing such a small amount of care to it. Let's go and watch me build a garden. So here is my new garden that I am sharing with you because there is no excuse for anybody who says they cannot garden anymore. Now for me, I did have to rake the wood chips. Remember, Gary's got those wood chips that's like eight inches deep. But there is the green chair. That green chair, and now here they come. All the chairs. Look at this. You can set it up 
any way you want. I decided to go in what they call like a horseshoe style, you know, very much like keyhole, a keyhole style. And I went all the way around with those chairs. You can pick them up really cheap, $5, $10. The stores have them for all different prices. And a lot of times people throw them away, like I said. Then once it was all lined up, here it comes, my favorite thing. You know, the totes, the storage containers. There they go. And so I put a storage container, a tote on each chair. Remember, a chair is the perfect thing to use because they are designed to hold about 200 pounds. Weight is not a problem. So each chair got its own tote. Look at this garden. Stop and look and analyze what is going on here. Literally had this garden built in minutes. Look at that. Now, I did have a lot to say here, but the wind was blowing so hard that I am just going to narrate over this. I was excited. I had 11 totes there. You saw my wall. I have to walk all the way down that wall in the driveway and water everything and take care of everything and go up and down. This is going to be me walking in, servicing everything in a matter of minutes, literally a few minutes, no joke. When you enter in there, everything is within arm's reach. The plants are grow going to grow wonderful. You can grow in here tomatoes, peppers, carrots, lettuce, okra, watermelon, all kinds of squash, zucchini, cucumbers, anything you want to grow. Each container is an independent raised bed. So you won't have your vegetables fighting the root system with each other. You're going to have each garden in there independent. And when you want to tear it apart and start over, it's not going to disturb the other plants growing. This is the perfect setup. You could go buy a raised bed. Absolutely. My brother did. Cost him, what, 120 And then it's big. Here, you get, you know, it comes winter and you're, let's say you're in snow. You could take all those chairs. You could stack them. You can move the totes. You could do whatever you want. This garden can be moved. This garden can stay here. You can make the garden bigger. You can make multiple gardens. You can do all kinds of things with this garden. As one of my subscribers said, you can chase the sun. I love that. When the sun moves, you move the garden. If you're in an area where you're not getting snow, you move it to the sunniest location, get six hours, and you're going to have a winter garden growing beautiful. I can't think of a better garden than this garden. This is going to be my favorite garden. It's going to be the easiest to maintain. If you're in a wheelchair, you can get in there. You can put this on a patio. You can put this on a wooden deck. You can put this on a driveway. You can put this on grass, your backyard, anywhere. This can be set up anywhere. Now with holes, remember, all totes have to drain. All containers have to drain. Your plants need drainage. So with that, you're going to put the holes where you want. I am going to put them a little higher because I'm in a warm area and I want to be able to maintain a little bit of water in there. So I don't have to water every day. I'm going to put the holes up about a half inch to one inch high. And I'm also going to put containers in the front so I can catch the water and rewater because you know how I build these totes with all kinds of leaves and and kitchen scraps and everything from my own garden. That is all soil being made and creating its own plant food. So I catch that water. Now, when I set this up, I'm not going to set up every single tote. I am going to set up most of them, but I'm going to leave one or two totes. So as I'm servicing this garden, I'm going to throw all the leaves as I clean it up in one of those totes and I will be now building my own soil. As far as watering it, one, two, three. Literally walk in there, I've got a hose there and I can spin on a dime. With you, you can use a hose, you can use a couple watering cans and you walk in there and everything's done. This is gonna be the easiest garden to maintain. The easiest garden to grow in. As far as plastic, a few of you have said plastic is bad. Plastic can start to break down at 140 degrees. Your soil is always cooler than your air. So if your soil in there reaches 140 degrees, I guarantee you, you have a lot more to worry about than your tote in the yard with your temperature probably being about 160. 
totes. These totes I've got in my yard have been lasting me for four years and up. So as long as there's soil in there and you're maintaining a garden in there, they're gonna last a long time. Now also, if you've got dogs, this will keep your dogs out of your garden. If you've got rodents in your garden, this can possibly keep them out too. You can easily tool it. As you know, I use tool, T-U-L-L-E. But a lot of critters cannot climb the chairs, nor do they want to bother climbing the chairs because they don't know what it is. Ants, if you've got ants, a lot of you have told me of fire ants, you can keep the ants out of this type of garden. This is so good for so many issues. Gophers, you've got gophers, Many of you have told me you can't grow a garden because of gophers. Your gopher problems are over. Your rabbit problems are over. This can be the perfect garden for so many of you. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will garden. I hope you understand that you can make this the size that you want. You can expand it. You can do what you want. And with this, you live in an apartment. Just think, you each could have one or two chairs and you all could be maintaining and taking care of your own garden with friends and relatives in your building, all having their own garden in this cute little horseshoe fashion, where if you can't water, they'll water for you. This is the best community garden and kids will love it. It's beautiful and you're gonna grow tons of food in this garden. You know how to set it up, set it up like I've taught you how to set it up and you are gonna have all the food that you need in a beautiful garden that practically maintains itself. Now, if you want a watering system, I don't use a watering system. You can run it one, two, three, all the way around because they're so close to each other. I'm gonna grow watermelon in here and I'm gonna have watermelon going around the top probably. You can put stakes in the totes. So when your tomatoes get big, you're gonna stake them. This is the best garden I can think of. Like I said, this is going to be the better, best garden out of everything I've got on the property because it's going to be the easiest to maintain. Sorry for the wind on this. This is why I had to narrate it. It was so windy. So ending note here. Can you believe I come out here and starting to blow again the wind? This makes me feel like resetting up the entire garden. I walk in here and I spin around and I've got everything at my fingertips. I've got water, I can trim my plants, I'm gonna keep a couple totes that are gonna be designated to throw leaves in as I groom my garden in here. When I come in here to water, I mean, this is like the easiest thing. There's 11 totes here, and think of how much space I need when I put them in a straight line I've got all that down there and you've got to walk the whole place and you've got to trim and then bring buckets. If I come in here to service anything, whether I want to feed them plant food that I've made, it's all in an arm's reach. I can even sit a chair in here and just enjoy the garden as it grows. With that, have a great day and don't forget to grow something. Don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye everybody. Oh, this is so cool.